Hey guys, welcome back to another devlog of Sharks and Alpacas, my little Python game development project that I've been working on for the last few months. And today we have some big plans. It's been about a week since I recorded the last video and I have a little bit of progress to show you. And after that, I want to get into placing structures in our world. All right, but let me show you now quickly what I've been working on in the last week. Just a couple of small things, some cleanups. But for example, we can see that we have now the sprites also for the items, not just for the characters. So we have a spear and we have an axe and I can drop the spear and then hold the axe. So this works similar to the sprite files, it's just adjacent files with the different vector layers and I load them in for each item and then can display them in different states. Another big change I made is to how I chop down trees. So when we pick up the X, instead of getting the E icon, we actually get the X icon. And that means that we can no longer press E simply to harvest the tree. We actually have to hold down the storage slot we have it in. And as you can see, we have a different progress bar for the X. Now we have to let it fill up, let go and then we chop down our tree and remaining is a little tree stump that we can then pick up and we have some wood in our inventory. One more important change I did is I was able to raise the frame rate a bit with a little trick. So as you can see, all these water tiles are constantly updated according to the wave texture below. And instead of updating every water tile, every frame, I update the odd and even tiles alternately. And that saves me a lot of time and brings up the frame rate to above 60, which is what I was aiming at. But of course, not everybody will have the same hardware so it might run slow on some people's computers so what you can do now is you can go to the settings turn off the waves and this will raise the frame rate up to over a hundred and you just won't get the animation but the rest will stay exactly the same so I think that's a good compromise and will hopefully solve the frame rate problem for a while all right but now it's time to go ahead and start working on not quite crafting but what i want to do is convert the wood item into some structures that are placeable so first step converting the wood let's go i was thinking about it a bit more over the last few days and why i didn't want to call it crafting that's what it is. We want to convert one resource into a variety of different items. And we need a way to distinguish which item this resource is crafted into. So a lot of games do this simply by offering you a list of different items that you can craft from a certain resource. I don't want to go this route. Another alternative is what Minecraft is doing. Having a grid and you place your items in there and if the crafting recipe is valid, you get your output item appearing on the right. And I don't want to directly copy that, but what I do want to emulate is this feeling of crafting that you get from Minecraft. This little endorphin rush when you get the recipe just right and your item appears on the right. Book, obsidian. Ba bam, enchanting table. I think that's very essential to the satisfaction of crafting in Minecraft. So that is what I will try to emulate for sharks and alpacas. On top of that, when we established the ray casting for sharks and alpaca on hexagonal grids, we had our little test work. And while playing around with this ray casting vector, I found it quite satisfying to try and make little patterns in this hexagonal grid. So why not make this a little mini game that will serve our crafting purposes? Depending on what pattern you make in this hexagonal grid, you can craft an item. And that allows me to do several things. Number one, no unlocking of crafting recipes. All the crafting recipes are gonna be there from the beginning, depending if you can remember the patterns that are necessary for it. And I think this gives the player a cool feel of accomplishment. Second of all, since it will take some time for you to figure out these patterns, it will give a certain kind of time pressure to your crafting. So it is actually worth it to be skillful at crafting things because every second you spend finding the right pattern, the sharks will keep eating away on your island. And I think these factors together will make for an engaging crafting experience. But let's implement it first 
and then reevaluate if everything I imagine is actually true. I spent a lot of time and converted our test hexagon ray casting window into a little bit of a proof of concept. And I still left the random solid tiles in. I think they could add a certain randomness. Let's say you have to get a certain pattern for a log to get a certain item, but maybe the log is not of the quality high enough to make this kind of pattern. Anyways, it took me a little while to figure out how best to analyze these patterns. Let's say these four tiles, for example, if I click, you can see if I take the window away a bit, that we have a pattern matched for a fence. So this would be a fence post, let's say. So the way I do it now is I use the cube coordinates of all the activated tiles, subtract the smallest, and then compare them to a template. I'll have to spend quite a bit of time figuring out feasible patterns that are doable, while being not too easy as well. So a wall would be three, four, three. So I could do it like this, for example. And you can see it takes a bit of trial and error, but this would be a 343 and it would recognize as wall. I kind of like the idea. It makes crafting challenging, not too boring, but at the same time, once you have some practice at it, I think you can get really skilled at it and do it really, really fast. And what could also be fun is to have some really, really complicated patterns somewhere hidden to have some Easter egg items that you would only come across in, in very rare cases if you try around a lot. But to come back to the beginning of the episode, I mentioned that I wanted to place down structures. Well, I guess we got a bit sighted with the whole crafting system, so I'm not sure if we'll get around to actually placing the structures. But what I do want to do is get the little GUI window like this working inside the game. Oh, cock. been a few days so I thought I'd give you guys an update. I've been working on implementing the GUI window into the game so let's pick up the axe and see how far I've gotten. So we have this GUI window now and I can move around with it. I haven't quite gotten around to implementing the vectors yet but I wanted to give you guys another update before I go on another work trip to South Korea this time so not too far away only a few hours flight and I will hopefully be able to make some progress when I get back uh, in about a week from now. So, sorry for the delay, but this year has been crazy with business travel. I might include some footage from South Korea in this video, so enjoy that, and I'll see you on the other side. Alright, finally made it back from South Korea, caught a little cold, not COVID this time, so I had a few days of recovery and I went on a nice little hike yesterday which was really needed. I haven't been out in the forest for a long time and I needed a day to regain my appreciation for nature a little bit. Anyways, long story short, I'm ready to get back into finishing up the GUI and I think then we'll have to call it an episode for this time. Quite a few hours of troubleshooting later, I think I got the basics working. So when we hit the tree with our axe, we get our crafting window. I implemented a few icons to let you know what's going on. The tool we are using, we have the item we are working on and we have the vectors working. And if you paid attention, you can see that on the right, we have our result that shows up when we have our pattern. So right now we are actually crafting the tree and if we have a horizontal cut of three, exactly three at this point, we get our log on the right. And the final thing I want to bring up is the radius of our little pattern here. It is variable and it will depend probably on the tool, maybe on your skill. I haven't quite made up my mind yet. But of course, the items you can get will depend on the area you have to work with. So let's craft a log. And as you can see, this is how it works now. And then you can pick it up. Up. It's still not perfect, there's still some little issues with it, but the basic concept is working and I'm quite happy with it at this point. 
All right, that's gonna be it for this devlog. Hope you guys enjoyed, hope you guys learned a little bit, and I hope to see you all again in the next one. Bye-bye.